Good players work out, great players outwork. You should never give up on your dreams. A wise man once told me to remember three simple letters. A, I, P. What's that stand for? Anything is possible. That's the message that we portray here at the Basketball Academy. In the course of five years, we've had over 10,000 athletes travel to our Basketball Academy and train. Out of all of those players, there's always gonna be that one player that stands out. For me, when I think about a player that really exudes greatness and, and, and it's a little bit different than everybody else, I think about Zion Harmon. Oh. So um, when I brought him over, I was just amazed by um, how similar our thought process was. You know? And I really just sat back and watched how Pat put his heart and soul into, into Zion to um, all the, the drills in between. I'll never forget the first day this kid came to the gym. He was fascinated by the workout that he received and, and he was just looking around the gym at all the equipment and, and the baskets and he was saying to himself, man, I'm gonna really take advantage of this. He walked out of the door that night. He looked at me and he looked at his dad and he said, Is anything is possible? And like once me and Zion left that day, yeah, hold on, that's very similar to what we believe. I can do all things through Christ. Anything yeah. is possible. He said, What time can I come back tomorrow? <laughs> and ever since then, he's never left. I got this kid though. Um, what do like? What do you mean, like? He like you a, he like a mini you, man. He got <laughs> he got the right to left a little bit. He's uh, still working on the hands, but um, I want you to check him out, man. Right. Hey Z, what's good? I want you to meet somebody. What's up, hey, boy? Hey. How you doing? You know who that is? Yeah, of course. Steve Francis. What's up, man? Face <laughs> to watch him all the time. Yeah. Right on the street, man. They say that you uh, that you can boogie, man. I'm still working on it. <laughs> how, um, how, how you really like working with Pat? I mean, is there anything specific that, that is really helping your game, you think? Uh, main thing is just the mindset. The mindset. You got to keep that outward mentality your whole career. That's, what, that's, the, that's the best answer you yeah. can give. Right? Look like it's your turn up, so we're going to take some time to work on some of your things and pick your mind and see what you think, uh, you know, what you think you can you know, possibly get better with. I think the success that Zion is seeing on the basketball court, he kind of already has that target on his back as being you know, the best player to come out of this area. So why not have somebody like a legend, Steve Francis, come and pass the torch and maybe guide him in the right direction? I was trying to see what I was saying. Uh, I, want, I, want, I, I would think that I wanted him to look at like more angles, angles to, to be more efficient. Uh, less dribbles, but when you have to dribble, you gotta give them the business, because one, they're quicker than a lot of the other guys, and two, the offense is gonna start with you.
decision time. I already know every school in their mother wants. You got any preferences you like? I mean, I like Kentucky, uh, Louisville, cool. Kansas. UK? Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, those are some good schools, but um, right around the corner, we can walk right into Maryland. <laughs> so let's go. You trying to put that bed in Maryland? We can walk right there. <laughs> but nah, I mean, that, that's, that's, a big, that's a great experience, man, all those schools coming after you and you being able to sit down and really articulate what you want to do basketball-wise in the school. So. What are some of the things you want to attain? I know everybody has different things that they want to do. People set high standards. I would say, what standards do you hold yourself accountable for? How, how would you do that? Move. Standards, like, uh, I just make sure I want to live right, like, in, in the religious point of view, and translate that onto the basketball court. So I can, like, lead people to the right direction, not go in the wrong direction for their life. I mean, any visions as of today of you seeing yourself getting caught in that draft? I pray about it every night, so yeah, I see it. <laughs> and, you know, that's the best thing you can do. And, and there's a lot of people, you know, as we all know, you know, it's, it's real seldom that a lot of anybody make it to the NBA. And um, I'm glad that's not the only thing that you're looking at. You know, and the NBA is right there waiting. What's up? Anything is possible, man. You got to keep working. I mean, Anything is yeah, possible. Your story be an inspiration to the next generation, man. So. outside we're here in the DMV and I think it's a good some of the things that you uh, that you were talking to me about earlier about you know discipline as far as God and just showing another way those are the type of things that you, you know, basketball is secondary to because who you are as a person will speak more volumes and here I am retired basketball player and um, the place that I'm gonna go to that we're gonna go to now will affect generations and generations and generations to come. legacy and you know things that you that you do so for myself personally the reason why I brought you here is because growing up in Maryland Pat as you can test <clears throat> outdoors was always the basketball like outdoors is where we learn how to dribble a lot more and you know perfect our game so this place here um, is where I grew up at um, and the vision for me was to be a kid from this place with one basket and being retired now, we have different generations who are able to do not only basketball. But for me, um, I didn't play a lot of high school ball. I uh, played my sophomore year, a few, a few games I played basketball. Unfortunately, um, my mom passed away at a young age, so I was uh, forced to play outside in the basketball courts and, and firehouses and things like that. Obtained my GED and the rest is history. And education was always something. That, uh, she was still there. <laughs> and to do that, what I did was I dedicated this whole park to her just because of, you know, besides basketball, like this will never go anywhere. And um, sanctuary for me to come to relax and to know, you know, everything about where, how I click, how I work, and this is where I come. Like when you walk down to this park, it's an experience. It's an experience, so it's like, it's like a museum to me, and it's something that I'm, you know, something that uh, out of all my accolades, I think is probably the best accolade that I ever can, you know, give back to the community and my kids and my family. Well, growing up uh, 
uh, at Washington, the best thing that we had as far as training facility was will. Everybody believed in each other and we were able to teach each other everything that we learned on television. We would go out and emulate any type of moves. Um, and of course, our coaches, uh, their training, <clears throat> basic training, I mean, um, cones and things like that. But I think nowadays as the players are getting better and uh, technology is progressing, I think uh, what Pat has it, AIP is the best thing that's moving. Oh. First time I seen Pat play was probably like 2003, um, right before uh, the AM one really, really got off to a humongous start. Um, I've known him uh, through a lot of people in Washington, D.C., because anybody can dribble the basketball like that, the word will get around to the top players. And uh, I, was, I was amazed um, just to see somebody uh, from my neighborhood not only you know us being in the NBA on the court, but we still have the streets on lock with Pat out there running the streets. And um, ever since then, uh, our conversations don't stop about picking each other's brain about basketball life and a lot of things of those natures. The unique thing about Pat, like I said, ball handling is what everybody wants nowadays. And uh, to be able to do it in a disciplined way, not undisciplined, but a disciplined way to be flashy, you get the best of both worlds. My favorite move as a kid was the crossover. And, you know, to be able to come full circle, you know, I can remember being at home studying tapes of him playing at Maryland with the Rockets and, you know, to see him demonstrate it in person and, and show me how to really do it the right way, you know, that, that means a lot. And as far as off the court, I mean, look where we at right now. You know, he always talked to me about leaving a legacy. You know, I have a basketball academy and facility, but this right here to have a part, you know, with your name and, and, and your foundation and, and your family, you know, that, that speaks volumes. And, you know, that definitely inspired me to want to try to do the same type of thing. When I trained with Coach Pat, we would get up as early as 4 a.m. to train, work out, get shots up, and just get that extra work in, because the little things matter the most. Uh, Coach Pat's method of training is definitely, he just want to see you work. You got to outwork and just be consistent. Come in every day, put the work in, and get better. Coach Pat been a role model to me by just inspiration man inspiration to just always get better to our work and to try new things with all the tricks he be doing with the basketball well I had a lot of big accomplishments but I would put my gold medal the USA basketball 16 year at the top that was just a different type of feeling my ultimate goal number one above all is to make it to heaven and number two just to be the best I could be to just see it's possible.